I absolutely love talking about goal setting. It's one of my personal favorite topics, mainly because it really enables us to do a lot more in, um, bring a lot more in our life and do a lot more in our lives. So uh, I believe that I am where I am today because of the kind of goal setting that I did for myself many years ago and the process that I continue to follow till date. And today I'm going to share that process with all of you. I'm very excited. Uh, and with that, I'm going to share my screen and we'll start. Awesome. So let's start uh, by discussing um, everything about goal setting. And I know that goal setting as a topic may seem, um, when, when I talk about uh, goal setting to people in general, uh, I receive very common sort of, um, you know, responses from people. If I tell them, what do you think about goal setting? People either come and tell me that, oh, that extremely complicated process, it's not for me. Or they come and uh, tell me that, oh, it's so juvenile. I feel like I feel like a teenager, you know, sitting and uh, planning, planning out my goals in my school diary, because that was probably the last time that a lot of us have any, any uh, memory of doing effective goal setting. But I believe that goal setting is a process that can fit into any and all lifestyles. And in today's uh, session, I'm going to basically break down the whole process for you, a process that's not just simple, but is also catered to your unique needs and requirements. So let's start. Um, the agenda is to really first talk about the myths around goal setting. Like I said, a lot of people have a lot of perceptions about what goal setting is and the power that it holds. Um, so I want to bust all of those myths and then I'll uh, share with you a foolproof four-step four goal setting process that I've followed till date. 8,000 people in my academy follow as well and we've all seen massive success come to us. So I'm pretty sure that if I share this with you, you'll see success in your life as well. Um, and then we'd also talk about you know, setting goals is one thing, but how do we stick to them and actually achieve them throughout the year? Because, uh, uh, you know, it, the motivation to um, to stick to our goals is very high in the initial few days of a new year, but then it completely tapers off towards uh, with, within the first month for most people. So um, I'm going to help you build an accountability system around your goals as well. And towards the end, I'll be happy to take any questions that you may have about this process. If this sounds okay, I'm going to go ahead to the next slide. Awesome. So basics out of the way first. Why do we even do goal setting? Why do we have to get into this extremely complicated process of setting goals? Because see, I know myself, right? I know what I want from life. Like vaguely, we all know where we are heading. Um, vaguely, I know that in the next uh, 10 years, maybe I want to be retired tired at some beautiful, um, you know, uh, in some beautiful town in maybe Southeast Asia, maybe that's a random vision that I have in my head. But unless I put it down in a concrete way on a sheet of paper and actually design action steps to make that happen, that goal is going to just remain a random goal. It's not going to become a plan. And when it doesn't become a plan, it doesn't become my reality. So goal setting essentially helps you in um, giving like a concrete shape and structure to your plans. And more importantly, um, there are two images in front of you. Uh, let me paint a picture for you. So um, we're in the last month of December. And this is sort of like that year where all of us have the highest level of energy and motivation. We all want to get into our best shape. We want to eat healthy. We want to maybe run the marathon next year. We want to do all of those amazing things. So our energy is high. And we decide that, okay, I want to, I want to maybe get to my ideal weight and I want to become super fit and go to gym every day. Let's say that's the goal that you set for yourself. First of January, you're super motivated to execute that. Second, third, fourth, again, you're showing up consistently. You're going to your gym and you're so proud of yourself. You feel amazing at the end of it because you're achieving your goal day after day after day. But by the time it's around 10th of January, 15th of January, you start to see your motivation drop a little bit. You start to realize that hmm, maybe if I just skip for today and get that extra hour of sleep, that'll be awesome. And uh, that today turns into five other days and then it just goes away from our lives. So goal setting as a process, if it has accountability built in, it will allow you to let this be your reality even throughout, even through the later part of the year. And it does not let you turn this into this, which is bound to happen for most of us. So goal setting as a process is extremely essential because A, it gives shape and a realistic identity to the goals and the vague plans that you have in your head. And it allows you to let this be your reality and not this, okay? Cool, but we all know that goal setting is important. We know that it's, it's a, we, we do that uh, at work. I'm sure whatever teams you represent, marketing, finance, human resources, whatever, I'm sure you must be doing goal setting for your own departments. You must be doing that at a work level. 
but in our personal lives somehow we absolutely do not uh, implement that for ourselves in our own lives and i truly believe it is because there are certain myths that people have around goal setting number one is that they think it's extremely time taking i mean who has the time to sit and create like an elaborate goal setting system i vaguely know where i'm heading and i feel like that's good enough for me if you ask me to spend like a whole day just thinking about my goals and thoughts that's too time taking i have better things to do in life and i feel like this is the biggest myth that people have around goal setting that it has to be a time taking process it really does not have to be that and we'll see how we make that happen also a lot of people believe that goal setting and all is for productivity self improvement nerds and it's not for regular people you know people who have who who just want to have fun in life and want to do a lot of other things and you know just growing every day is not the only um, ambition so um again i truly believe that's not the case because um, goal setting as a process is useful sorry just give me a second i'm just going to mute my slack i'm sorry yeah so goal setting um, as a process is useful not just for people not just for people in their 20s and 30s or 40s i mean like a 5 year old could do a really interesting goal setting process for himself or herself and an 80 year old could do a uh, could could perform a goal setting process for themselves and set goals for the next couple of years of their life so it really is agnostic to what age group you fall in what background you come from what is it that you want in life it applies to everyone a lot of people also believe that goal setting requires complicated products expensive products like a planner or a journal and apps and tools and things like that it need not require any of that i mean just your blank notebook if you are an analog person or just excel sheet if you are a more digital person is more than enough for you to set up a good goal setting system another thing is another thing that a lot of people believe is that what even is the point of setting goals i mean yeah i'm going to set a goal that you know i want to get to my goal weight this year but um, if those plans are anyway going to go go down the drain in the next couple of days why even bother i mean i've been doing this for 5 years why even bother trying setting goals anymore because because i i anyway i'm not able to keep up my motivation now this is exactly where goal setting's accountability system comes into place so if you set up your goals in such a way that there is an accountability that's built into it this myth completely vanishes and lastly a lot of people see goal setting as a very boring overwhelming process that i have to like it's too much for me to do and i don't have like i would rather watch another episode of my favorite sitcom on netflix that would give me more fun than you know creating my own goals and plans and visions and things so um that's not the case because um goal setting is not just about you know figuring out how often are you going to eat outside or or um, you know how much money you need to save and invest every year no but it's also about planning fun things like where are you going to go for a vacation this year or what are some new cuisines that you're going to try and what are some amazing new restaurants or cities that you want to visit so goal setting can be made fun if you add um different aspects to it if you don't make it career and um and money focused only if you if you generalize it to your life and add multiple um add multiple other elements to it it could become a really fun process as well so with this in mind um i believe that an effective goal setting system first of all has to get rid of all of these myths i mean it an effective goal setting system has to ensure that none of these myths um are are a part of the system that we try to create for ourselves so i uh, call my goal setting system and this is something that i teach students in my academy as well is the upma system of goal setting so um what it essentially means is that the system needs to be extremely uncomplicated it cannot be something that takes hours or days or weeks for me to set up extremely uncomplicated couple of hours in i should be able to set up my system for the whole year uh, also it needs to be catered to your personal style um if you are a digital person i mean it would it would help if the system allows you to have all of your goals and trackers and things on on maybe like an app or a platform that you enjoy if you're an analog person it should it should be flexible enough for you to implement the same process on a piece of paper anything right it needs to be catered to your personal style number 3 it also needs to be visible and motivating the reason why we went from this to this around 15th of january was because you know in in the early days we had a lot of motivation to get up and do things but over time we lose the motivation because there's no visual presence in front of us that allows you to that that sort of reminds us constantly of what we are trying to move towards so a visible and a motivating goal setting system allows you to constantly have the after life of it the success 
that you receive after those goals are achieved in front of you so that you can visualize that and make sure that you constantly move towards it. And lastly, it needs to have accountability built in. I mean, what's the point of doing this whole goal setting process if it's going to go down the drain by mid-January, right? We need to ensure that it has accountability systems built in so that um, even if it's like end of December, you still have your processes going on. Cool. So with this in mind, let me break down my four-step system that I've been using for many, many years now. I'm very, very sure that you would find this helpful. Cool. So step number one, this is my favorite thing to do with my goal setting process, which is to actually look back and review the year that's gone by. The reason why that is, is unless we review what happened in 2022, we would not know what is it that we want to carry forward in 2023, the habits that were, th uh, that was, that, that were keeping us thriving. And what do we leave back in 2022, the habits that were stopping us from doing a lot more than what we possibly could have done. So this review process really just allows us to um, do a live audit and perform a small sort of uh, testing system. Like it's like a dipstick for our own life to understand um, you know, where we are and where we want to be. So there are five questions that I always answer for my 2022 review or the review of the year that's gone by. First is I try to describe my year that's gone by in one word. I mean, was it what kind of a word would I want to associate with this year? This could be a positive word for a lot of people. It could be a negative word for a lot of people. But just that one word would really give you a sense of your overall average feeling that you had throughout the year. So that's a starting point of your review system. From there, I recommend that you move on to identifying your biggest achievements of the year. I mean, we want to start our goal setting process um, on a high note, right? So let's list down all of the amazing achievements that you had in the year uh, that went by. So these could be things like maybe um, you were able to um, get the promotion that you were so um, that you were that that you were working so hard to get for a long time. Maybe um, maybe you got that award at work that you were aim aiming for. Maybe um, you finally decided to um, to uh, you know optimize your LinkedIn profile. Maybe um, you were able to take that one vacation that you really wanted to take with your parents. Whatever amazing achievements that you were able to have in the year that went by. It's really nice to list those out. This is just a very positive uh, mood boost, boosting um, question to answer just at the start of the process because it puts you in a positive mind space. After that, we move on to identifying the habits. Now, we had all of these achievements, right? Let's say you had all of these achievements in this year. There must be something, some habits that you would have followed that allowed you to have these achievements in the first place. So for example, if you got that promotion this year that you were eyeing for so long, then what, what were some of the habits that you were following that actually made that a possibility? We try to figure that out because these are the exact habits that we want to carry with us in the new year as well. So maybe um, you showed up on work at time every day. Maybe you put in your you put in your absolute best for every project that you pick up, may, uh, that you picked up. Maybe um, you um, you went out of your way to help your team members and your colleagues. So try to identify what were the driving factors for making those achievements happen and try to identify those habits. Once you list down those habits, these are the exact habits that you must remember to carry forward with you in the new year. Next, you need to also, uh, we need to face reality and also ask ourselves, what were some things that we wanted to achieve in this year, but couldn't? Like, I, I wouldn't call, call these failures because they aren't really, but maybe these were things that we really wanted to uh, achieve but for some reason that didn't happen it could be that maybe you wanted to get fitter but that didn't happen maybe you wanted to go to bed at a particular time every day maybe that didn't happen whatever that is make a list of that as well and then similarly try to identify the habits that stopped you from achieving these goals so if for example your goal was to eat at home every day almost like uh, most days in a week and that didn't happen what led to that that and uh, you would maybe find answers like you didn't have enough time after work to come and cook. Maybe you didn't have uh, um, maybe you didn't have um, an effective meal planning system which allowed you to um, you know come back and there were like things ready for you to just quickly um, come up with a meal that would allow you to eat healthy at home. Maybe you had those systems missing. Try to identify what led to you not achieving these goals. 
And these are the exact habits that we want to leave behind in the year 2022. So at the end of step one, essentially what I want you to have 100% clarity on is what are the habits that I'm carrying forward with me in 2023 and what are the habits that I'm leaving behind in 2022. And that sort of sets you up for a really effective goal setting process because you've done this audit of your own life and you have a very realistic picture of what's possible and what's not. Cool. Now we move on to step number two. Now, step number two is the actual goal setting. So this is the part where you actually go out and set your goals for the coming year. I mean, uh, the, the thing with, go with this uh, step is that a lot of people, um, when I ask them to set goals, like what are some things you want to achieve in the new year, they would usually come and uh, say things like, you know, I want to get uh, a certain percentage increment in my salary. Maybe um, I want to travel to this one particular place. Maybe I want to take my parents on a vacation, something, something. They'll have these, a, a few random big goals here and there because these are massive goals that occupy, occupy the, the most amount of headspace for us. But there are some smaller goals as well that we want to achieve in our lives. And if we don't categorize our goals into different buckets, the smaller ones, the ones that seemingly don't seem to have that big an impact on our life, um, tend to completely get ignored. So what I recommend doing instead of just randomly coming up with goals that you uh, want to have for 2023 is um, bucketing them into five categories instead. instead. So instead of uh, just coming up with a random goal, um, think of your goals in five categories. First, health and personal growth goals, like what are some health goals that you'd like to follow for this year? These would include things like fitness, any learning you want to add to your life, any habits you want to inculcate, any self-care rituals that you'd like to have. Maybe you want to start seeing a therapist, whatever it is, uh, some health and personal goals are one of the first things that you must in include in your goal setting process. Next, some financial goals. These would be things like maybe you want to increase your investment by a certain percentage this year. Maybe you want to increase your savings rate every month. You may, If you're currently saving 10% of your income, maybe you want to get to 20% savings. How do we get there? Um, then maybe you want to start retirement planning. Maybe you want to plan a big purchase. Let's say you're thinking of getting a car or you're thinking of saving up for a down payment so that you could plan to buy your house. Whatever that is, any big purchases that you're also planning would come under financial goals. Number three would be career goals. Now, these would be things like upskilling that you want to do for yourself to learn some new skills that would help you at your job. Uh, maybe you want to plan for a promotion that you'd like to apply to at your organization. Maybe you're thinking of doing a career pivot. Maybe you are in the marketing department. You'd want to move to data analytics or vice versa. If there is a pivot that you're planning, that could also be a really nice goal that you set for yourself. Next, you'd want to also look at some goals in the family and relationship category. So this could be things like spending more time with your parents, taking part in your kids' activities at school, date nights that you may want to have with your partner, any reunions with old friends and people that you'd like to plan for this year in your life. So those are some really fun goals to add. These are This is when the goal setting process can actually become fun because it need not necessarily just be about, oh, I want to increase my savings and I have to plan for this big purchase or you know I have to plan for my career for the next couple of years. I mean, yes, that's important, but we also get to plan a lot of fun things when we set our goals. And lastly, you could also look at travel, leisure, and entertainment goals, like any big vacations you want to take this year, any new food or cuisine or drinks that you'd like to try, any restaurants that have been on your list for a while and you really want to go, maybe some um, other entertaining activities you want to do, like maybe going for movie nights, maybe going for stand-up shows, whatever it is that's fun for you, try to add that into your goal-setting mix as well. But the important thing here is how do you set these goals? I mean, if you're, if one of your goals is to... Um, is to let's say um, get in a, get to your ideal weight and um, and uh, you know get fitter and maybe there are some some health conditions that you're battling with and you really want to get over that then what we would typically uh, set as a goal is an outcome goal so there are two types of goals that we set for ourselves outcome goals and process goals so an outcome goal is that it's the actual end outcome that you want to have at the end of the goal setting process. I mean, um, a health goal for you could be lose five kgs and get to my goal weight. Let's say that's an outcome that you want to have. But the thing is, we have absolutely no control over how many kgs of weight do we lose by, you know, um, by, by, uh, by improving our lifestyle. We would have absolutely no control over it. That is when process goals come into place. 
So you set your outcome goal. Yes, that's the first step. But what you need to do is sort of break down this outcome into processes. How do I get here? What do I need to do? What's under my control that I can do so that this out outcome goal can become a reality? So if I want to lose five kgs, my outcome goals could be going to the gym three times a week for 30 minutes, eating uh, only two meals per, per week outside and rest of the meals I would want to have home cooked so that I have complete control over what's going into my body. Maybe I want to sleep by 1130 every day so that I'm well rested and I uh, feel completely okay getting up in the morning and going to the gym, whatever it is that you think are going to be the right processes for you to achieve the outcome that is that those become your process goals. And a lot of times, the major reason why people don't achieve their goals is because they only set outcome goals. They set goals like, oh, I want to get 20% uh, salary increment this year, and I want to uh, lose five kgs, and I want to read 50 books. Okay, let's say they make these goals. How, how do I get there? I mean, I cannot control these things. A lot of these are not in my control. We need to break it down, see what's in our control, and do that. And once you have the, once you follow the processes, the outcome will automatically happen. So for all of the categories that we've defined here, let me give you some examples. So for health and growth goals, let's say that uh, your goals are to lose five kgs and read 12 books this year. So um, your um, ideal process goals for losing five kgs could be going to a gym near, near your house, visit three times a week for 30 minutes. Notice that when I write down my process goals, I make them super specific. We all know about the smart goal setting process. You try to make your goals uh, specific, um, measurable, um, attainable, realistic, uh, attainable, relevant, and time bound. So that's the smart goal setting process. They need to be um, specific, like how many times do you need to go to the gym? They need to be measurable. I mean, they need there's, there should be like a number associated with it, let's say like three times a week or 30 minutes a day so that you can measure and see whether you were actually able to make that happen or not. Um, you also need to make them uh, uh, attainable in the sense that, you know, if you set a goal to go to the gym uh, seven times a week for two hours a day, that's possibly not attainable with the kind of lifestyle that you live. In that case, that's not a good goal to set. So make sure that it's attainable. Um, also make, make sure that it's relevant. The goal should be relevant to you and your needs. If that's not, you will absolutely lose sight of it because there will be no intrinsic motivation to make that happen. And time bound. Make sure that you have a specific time. So I want to make this happen by this time. And uh, there should be like sort of like an end goal to it. So as long as you ensure that these five parameters are followed for all of the outcome goals, you will see that you will have a more realistic system set up for you. So set your outcome goal, lose 5 kg. So going to a gym, sleep by 11.30, so be in bed by 11, sign up with a nutritionist and follow the meal plan provided, eat out, um, eat out or order in only two times a week. As long as this happens, this would happen. This would automatically follow. Similarly, to read 12 books, it could be read 10 pages every day from 11 to 11.15 p.m., involve partner as well and discuss takeaways once a week. Maybe you could even go out and block each other's calendar that this is our book disc uh, discussion time and you could make that happen with your partner, your mother, your um, your roommate, anybody, whoever is, is excited in becoming a part of this journey with you. You could also consider maintaining a reading tracker and we'll come to trackers as we talk about the accountability system. Similarly, for financial goals, let's say if your goal is to invest 20,000 per month, then the process goals for that could be setting up a consultation with a CA to understand different options by January. So I set a realistic timeline end date to it that I want to make this happen by Jan. As soon as the salary comes in, I want to transfer 20% to a different account. I want to start an SIP um, that is recommended by, by the CA and automate the 20% transfer to SIP by setting a standing instruction so that the transfer happens automatically and you don't even have to come into the picture. So that's the process goal that you need to set for this. And I mean, these would be completely different depending on what stage of life you're in. Maybe you don't even need to set a consultation with a CA because you're a finance pro and you understand all of that. The process for each person would change, but um, as long as the process aligns with the end goal, you will notice that your end goal is achieved at the end of the year. Similarly, if you want to send your parents to a trip, you need to finalize the destination by Jan. You need to look up hotel, flight prices, all of that. You need to figure out the savings for the next two months and start the saving process. For career goals, if you want to learn Python, you need to figure out the best course, you need to sign up for it, block out the calendar to learn every day, make a course completion tracker and fill it every day. Similarly, if one of your career goals is to get active on LinkedIn, you need to figure out, okay, I want to post three content pieces per week, 
I want to plan content every Saturday. So you um, you will be posting maybe three times a week, but every Saturday you block out an hour to come up with the content ideas that we'll be posting on LinkedIn. Maybe you want to block 15 minutes uh, per weekday for engaging with other creators so that you know you actually get to have some networking and you get to expand your network on LinkedIn as well. So again, these would be completely different depending on your needs, but figure out the processes so that you're able to make this happen. For family and relationships, similar things for date night, you essentially block yours and your partner's calendar, you figure out the restaurant, uh, maybe you can schedule a weekly flower delivery for your partner, that would be really appreciated, you could discuss fun date night ideas once a month, you could do all of that. I mean, I'm saying block a calendar here, um, because that as a process may work for some couples, maybe some couples absolutely do not like to bring in like, you know, calendars and things into their relationship, they like to keep things casual, the process would change according to your needs and requirements however you think is um, ideal for your relationship, but try to have systems in place that would allow you to make the end goal happen. Similarly, checking up on parents, set an alarm on phone for every alternate day. As soon as the alarm goes off, do not snooze. Just give a call to your parents, check up on them. They would appreciate it. So that's something that uh, would uh, that could be a really nice process goal to set for checking up on parents. And lastly, for travel and leisure, similar thing, if you want to travel to Paris, you need to figure out your travel dates. You need to figure out the budget, visa rules, all of that. Um, if you want to learn Thai cooking as a leisure goal, maybe you could find a good online or in-person class by a certain date, and then you need to sign up and you need to block your calendar, et cetera, et cetera. So I hope this gave you clarity on how you sort of take a process, uh, an outcome goal that I want to travel to Paris and really turn it into a reality by breaking it down into small processes that are under your control, which with a particular deadline would allow you to make this big final overwhelming thing happen in your life. Okay, cool. Now the goals are set, but how do we ensure that we actually follow all of these crazy, you know, process things that we've set for ourselves? To make that happen, we really need to set up an accountability system, a tracking system in your life that allows you to keep a track of all of these goals that you've laid out for yourself. Now your tracking system can be in two forms. If you are somebody who enjoys, um, you know, having your entire goal setting system, your second brain system on a digital setup, then you may consider, uh, you know, pl using platforms like Notion or uh, a digital planner or an Excel sheet or whatever you think is comfortable, the best suited for your needs, figure that out. The important thing here is to know, know that your goal setting process, your tracking system needs to be what works for you. I mean, if you go uh, and fig, uh, if you go on YouTube and try to identify what are some tracking systems that are used by, uh, you know, maybe your favorite co content creators or somebody whose advice you truly appreciate, you would notice that a lot of them use very different things. Like somebody would have the most amazingly laid out notion uh, board that they are using for all of their planning. Maybe somebody has this, um, has like a 12 uh, tab Excel sheet that they've created for themselves because they like to be that meticulous. It works for them does not mean it necessarily works for you. So do not fall for fancy here. Try to figure out what works for you. If you're a beginner, do not make the system too complicated. Do not add every little tracker, uh, which would end up taking a lot of your time and you would make the process extremely overwhelming for you. Try to keep it simple so that if, even as a beginner, you'll easily be able to follow and it shouldn't take a big chunk out of your life, like in terms of the timing. And if the digital system absolutely does not work for you, if this isn't your jam, then you absolutely can have a tracking system set on pen on paper also. I am a pen and paper person. I absolutely cannot stand the idea of having my goals on a notion template. It just feels so impersonal. I need to feel in touch with my goals. So I personally use the analog process. If you want to use an analog uh, tracking system, um, you may consider just using a blank notebook. That's helpful as well. Or you may even consider... Uh, you know, buying planners. There are several, several planners that are available in the market. Uh, thankfully, in India, you'll find a lot of different options that across different budget points. Whatever works for you, you may consider investing in one. The only thing with a planner that you buy uh, from the market or ready-made planner is that it will have um, trackers and systems that are made according to what the creator wanted. So they may not be very personal to you. So I, that's why personally like using a blank notebook and according to my trackers and my systems that I'd like to have, I sort of automate my process. Like I design that whole thing on my um, blank notebook and it allows me to build a tracking system. 
Cool. So um, what do you need for an effective tracking system? So we've, we've gone through this, right? We, we've made a list of a lot of these process goals, which are essentially to do list things that we need to uh, do in order to make these outcome goals happen. So what I then take, what I do is I go back and have a look at all of these pointers. And based on that, I come up with three kinds of trackers. I need a daily tracker. I need a weekly tracker and a monthly tracker. My daily tracker would have um, a list of things that I want to track on a day-to-day -day basis. Sort of like my meals. Did I eat at home or did I eat outside? Reading tracker, did I read five pages or no? Simple yes and no questions. Steps tracker, did I finish 10,000 steps or no? Uh, did I sleep at 11.30, which was my goal or no? Um, did I drink enough water? Like maybe a couple of liters of water that I'd set for myself. Did I do my 30 minutes of upskilling the course that I signed up for? Did I do that today or not? So have simple yes and no tracker set up for all of your daily activities. Similarly, for weekly things, you will have your date night tracker, which you want to have with your partner, workout tracker, parents call tracker, LinkedIn, LinkedIn post tracker, the things. And I am basically deriving all of these from the previous goals that I had set here. But of course, these would change according to what your process goals are. And lastly, monthly tracker. So this would be your investment. Did my 20% of paycheck go towards my investment fund this month? Uh, did I have a, did I tra uh, transfer money to my travel fund, which would allow me to take the trip to Paris and also send my parents to the trip that I really want them to go for? And uh, do I have my health check tracker in place if I want to get some blood tests and things done? So essentially you create a tracker with simple yes and no answers so that it's not complicated for you to, you know, like, did I do it? I, will, I did only 50%. No, yes, no. Simple binary system is very easy to create so your the tracker that you create needs to look something like this now this is so easy to make that you could just make it in your notebook you could replicate the same thing on an excel sheet you could replicate it on a notion dashboard whatever else you like what you do essentially is write all of the things that you need to do so let's say you look at your weekly uh, your daily tracker things so you look at you write your um, eight at home as one of the things then uh, read five pages here um, walked 10,000 steps slept at 11.30. So you write the exact habit that you want to track. And then you list, write down from 1 to 30 the days of the month. Uh, 1, 2, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, like that. And then each day that you actually follow it, just go. all you have to do before you go to sleep is pick up your tracker for five minutes and tick off everything that you were able to do for this day. And uh, so did you exercise today? Yes, yes. On the first, go ahead. Today, if today is the first, just go ahead and tick all the things that you were able to do here. Similarly, on third, go ahead and tick all the things. By the end of the month, you will have a very realistic picture of what goals were you able to achieve and what you were not. The number of ticks when you see that, okay, I do not see enough ticks on the exercise category. This was a goal that I was not able to pay enough attention to this month. So you can go back and you can pay more attention to that in future. Having something like this in front of you essentially motivates you, right? It just, it gives you a very clear reality check. You know, if we don't go to the gym six days in a row, our brain sort of forgets that, you know, oh, I didn't do it. And it just does not think of it as, as like a thing that I haven't done for six days. You just move on. You get busy with doing the things that you want to do in your life. But once you go back to your tracker and you see that for six days, there hasn't been a single tick mark on my tracker that could be a really nice motivation for you to get back on track. So this is the accountability system that essentially allows you to make all of these process goals happen and in turn, basically make the outcome happen as well. Okay, so really simple, again, not complicated. All you have to do is set this up once. It will take you an hour to set up this tracker and then that's it. That's all you need to do. You just need to tick mark for two minutes every day and you'll be done. Cool, now that we've done all of the boring part, we get to step number four, which is the fun and most exciting part of goal setting journey, which is actually making your goals visible. Remember I told you that um, if we don't have a realistic sort of uh, understanding of what our goals are, if we don't have a clear vision of what the afterlife of achieving those goals is going to look like, we'll forget about the goals midway and we'll absolutely not come back to it. So step number four is to add that uh, motivation back into your life by making your goals visible. And for this, the simplest thing to do, the easiest and the easiest thing like that wouldn't take any effort at all and would actually be a really fun activity for you to do as well would be to make a vision board. So a vision board essentially, I'm sure all of you already know what it is, but it's sort of like a sort of picture collage of um, 
of the afterlife of what your goals are going to look like. So for example, if you want to get healthy, you may want to have some pictures of, um, you know, what kind of food you want to have, what kind of exercises you want to do. Maybe um, you add the list of books you'd like to read. Maybe you want to have a lot of family time, you add some pictures around that. Maybe you want to take a trip, add the photos of places you'd like to visit and make your goals super visible in front of you. You Again, you could do this on an actual cardboard with real cutouts of uh, photos and images and things. And you could place that on your wall if that's where you derive most of your motivation. If you are a digital person, again, you may consider making something like this your computer's wallpaper. Every time you're open your laptop in the morning, if this is the first thing you're seeing, you'll constantly feel motivated to go back and achieve these amazing goals that you set for yourself at the start of the year. You may even consider making this your phone wallpaper or whatever is that one place that's in front of you almost all the time. That's a really nice place to make your vision board visible. So uh, what we did was first step, we looked back at our the year that went by, identified things we want to carry forward and identified things, uh, identified things that we want to leave behind. Then we set our goals in five categories, health, finance, career, family, and travel and leisure. Then we first set the outcome goals and then we broke them down into process goals. So if our uh, outcome goal was five kgs, we set up the processes and similarly for all of the goals. Then we ended up setting a tracking system, daily trackers, weekly trackers, and monthly trackers. We made this amazing tracker, which will take you an hour to make. That's set and ready for you to go for the rest of the year. Habit trackers are in fact even available, like blank habit trackers are available on Amazon for like just a couple hundred bucks if you want to invest in that and you don't even want to, um, you know, like go through the effort of building this yourself. That's also a possibility. And habit tracker formats are available on Canva, Notion, all of that as well. And in the end, you made your goals super, visual, um, super visible and visual in front of you so that you could always constantly go back and have a look at them and they keep you motivated. And yeah, so now the only thing we need to do is go back and see if this goal setting system we created for ourselves is UPMA certified. So um, is it uncomplicated? Or I know that after hearing, this may seem like a very complicated process, but trust me, this is something I've been following for many years now. It takes you a day one Saturday, just a couple of hours on a Saturday, if you spend to set this system up for the whole of 2023, you'll be all set. If, if you just need to spend maybe one half of a day to set you up for success for the whole coming year, I think that's uncomplicated. You also, this is also extremely catered to your personal style. You get to have all the flexibility in the world uh, with respect to what kind of goal setting you want to do digital, analog? Um, do you want your goals to be extremely, you know, are you a very tracker heavy person and you want to have the tracker for the smallest of things? Or do you just want to have top level trackers? You get to decide, right? It's your process and you design how your system needs to look like. So it's extremely personal. Is it visible and motivating? Yes. We've created this amazing vision board, which is going to stay in front of us at all times. So it's visible and motivating as well. And lastly, does it have accountability system built in? Yep, we made all of these amazing trackers. So it has accountability built in as well. Um, of course, if you have a partner who could work with you on uh, with the same goal setting system, like your parent, your kid, your uh, partner, anybody, that would be amazing. But even if you don't have anybody to uh, stick with you on this journey, doing something like this isn't very complicated. So it shouldn't take a lot of your time and you should be able to manage this alone as well. So I personally believe that this um, set system is extremely UPMA certified. And if you implement this for yourself, I'm sure you'll find a lot of amazing results for you in 2023. So with this, I close the session. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, and I'll be happy to take any questions at all. Just how do we build accountability? So I would want to sort of take a little spin and then say how, uh, what are your top three tips when you are thinking about accountability and how do you go about it? Right. So um, for me personally, um, there are a couple of different things that I've tried with respect to accountability. One, uh, building out the trackers that I've spoken about, that's helpful. But you know, the bigger challenge with building out these trackers is there are days when I forget to fill out the tracker also. So how do I make, how do I remind myself to even fill those trackers? So what I do is um, I uh, set um, an alarm on my phone, 11.15, it goes off, it's time it's time for me to take out my uh, tracker and just like tick things off. And I keep my tracker right next to where I sleep on my bedside table. So I, the goal is to make the process easy. It should be so uncomplicated that whatever you want is here, like within this much, that, you know, laziness does, just doesn't have an option to sort of uh, peep into your life so that is something that I've done that allows me to sort of uh, 
I think uh, throughout the session, the you gave the best advice, and I am somebody who's guilty of buying planners. So <laughs> this is really going to change my game. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, I I have been a planner person for the longest time. Like I used to launch my own planners as well, but um, I think over the last year, I've personally changed my uh, my own tracking system as well, and I now also get bored of having the same tracking system every month, right? We want to keep our goal setting process extremely fun and engaging. If it gets monotonous and boring, we stop. So if uh, if my habit tra tracker looks a certain way in January, I make it a point to like change it up, you know, add like a nice theme to it in February, like paint it different colors or add something else to make it more fun and engaging for me. So um, instead of investing in one bulky planner, I use a bullet journaling system. I create this whole system for myself and I try, that also allows me to have like different variations how when as in when I like that's that's really cool I hope uh, we all can change the way we plan next year from this session uh, so and the comments are so sweet I actually didn't get to see any of them while the session was going on um, we got a few laughs at Upma I almost didn't want to include it but I thought I, if, if I've come up with it I might as well <laughs> but it's so nice to see that you all enjoyed it Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, thanks, Saloni, so much. We really had such a great time in the session. And I think we're really, really excited to start off the new year now, at least on a happier and higher note. So thank you so, so much. So thank you so much. And may you have an amazing 2023. Have a great festive uh, end of the year. And I'll hopefully see you next time.